This is the KD camera mount light, specifically designed for the Micro Blackmagic 4K G2, but can be used with other cameras as well. It's fully adjustable. I'm gonna show you some of its features. I'm gonna show you the mounting of a camera and then I'm gonna show you how it's built. Here it is, the KD camera mount light. It's only 26 grams, very compact, very stiff, adjustable from zero to 50 degrees. It fits a 30.5 by 30.5 M3 mounting pattern. So you can mount it on anything with those mounting holes. It has quarter 20 slots and holes. And these two here are designed specifically for the Blackmagic Micro 4K G2. So you can mount it on the front or on the back. And this quarter 20 slot here can be used as well. It comes with two of these quarter 20 screws. And those are perfectly designed for fitting in here in these holes and using with any camera you, you like, but specifically the uh, Blackmagic Micro 4K G2 is really good for that. And I will show you how it mounts onto a frame. So here it is mounted on the KD50S Cinewoop. And you can see that 30.5 by 30.5 standard mounting pattern there. On this frame, it's mounted into press nuts, uh, but you could use normal holes and normal nuts, uh, whatever M3 mounting pattern you have on your frame, or you can design one for this and you've got the adjustability there. And then all you need to do is use a two and a half mil hex driver and tighten up these two screws on each side like that and do the same thing on the other side and it is super solid, super rigid, um, very low resonance. Um, as long as your camera is mounted properly on here, it really doesn't add any resonant spikes. Um, if your camera is wobbling on here, it will do obviously, so make sure to tighten that up properly. Now I'm gonna show you how I mount the uh, Blackmagic 4K G2 on there that I use. Here's the camera, and it's got these three quarter 20 mounting holes in the bottom, and I like using these outer two combined with the outer holes on the camera mount. So we're gonna take these quarter 20 screws that are included in the kit, and we're just gonna put them up through here and directly onto the camera. And I'm gonna use this hex key in order to secure them in. And it's a little bit difficult to show on camera, but you just wanna put one of those in finger tight like this. And then you can get the second one in. And using both these screws really secures the camera properly against moving around in any direction. And then once those are both in like that, then I'll just take this Allen key and secure both of them fully. And then once that's done, I can adjust the camera angle anywhere I want. So I put it right there. Use my driver to lock that in position on both sides. Now that is very solid and I can plug in my power into the SSD power module. Also a video on my channel of that and on my website as well if you want to get one of those. And it's a really nice solution for a mount. It's low profile, it's light, it's very stiff. Um, and being made of carbon, the idea is that if you do have a crash, then hopefully the mount will break and not your camera. Um, obviously with a Cinelifter you never want to have a crash, but that is how it's been designed um, instead of being out of CNC aluminium and it also makes it lighter, cheaper um, and just all round a better solution in my opinion. And that is how it looks with that camera on there. Now let's go on to the assembly instructions. So this is everything you get in the kit. You've got the carbon plates, more carbon parts here, you've got foam pads and you've got all the hardware and then you've got these quarter 20 screws which are the right length to work on a camera based on the thickness of this carbon top plate here. You should need just these two tools, two and a half mil and a two mil hex driver. And let's start on the assembly. We're gonna start with this bottom plate here. And you'll see on this side, these holes are countersunk. And then on this side, that's gonna be the top where the KD logo is. We're gonna start with these pieces here and you can see there are two versions of them you get five each we need four for the build and then there's a spare the bigger hole is the one that the press nuts are going to fit into 
these are the press nuts here. And the smaller ones just have a hole for the M3 screw. So the way this goes is the larger ones with the press nuts in them go in the front here and the smaller ones go in the back. And the way you install them is you use one of these M3 nuts like that and it fits inside this groove in these little bracket pieces here like that. And these can be a bit fiddly, but once you line it up properly, you can just push it through like that and you'll see it seated in there like that. It doesn't have to be perfect because it'll line up properly later. And then you're gonna put it in one of these notches like this, just like that. Again, it doesn't have to be all the way in, but that one does pop in nicely. And then that countersunk hole, we're gonna use these M3 by six millimeter countersunk screws and the two mil hex driver. And that's gonna secure very nice and snug in there. Just do that up tight, nice and snug. And that is a very, very strong connection right there. So we're gonna do the same thing with all four, the bigger holes at the front and the smaller holes at the back. And there we go, that is the bottom plate with all the brackets on. And now we're gonna add the press nuts to these two sections here. And you wanna get one of these two and a half mil socket head screws, and you wanna get an M3 washer, and then you wanna put the smooth side on here, through that hole. Get one of these press nuts, put it on like that, Get your two and a half mil driver. And secure that on there. And that should nicely tighten up against that. There we go. Just like that. And then same thing for the other side. And that's the bottom plate finished. That's how it should look. Just like that. Now let's move on to the top plate here. And you can see the same design here with these countersunk holes and the slots on this side. So we're gonna do the exact same thing as the bottom plate but the opposite. So the larger hole ones are gonna go at the back and the smaller hole ones are gonna go at the front. And this time, we're gonna use the M3 by eight countersunk screws. And they're gonna go through like this, two mil driver, just to secure those in place. Just like that. Now we've got all of these installed on the top plate, we're gonna do the same thing with the press nuts on the back. Now the top plate is finished as well. You can see that's nice and flush on there. Now we can start joining them together. So we're gonna use these M3 by eight cap head screws and a washer. And you want the shiny smooth side facing the carbon so it doesn't damage it as much. And then this is gonna go through the bottom plate and then the top plate is gonna join in like this. And gonna go through that hole like that. And then we're gonna use the two and a half mil driver to secure that through there. We don't need to tighten that up all the way yet because that's, that's how it's gonna hinge. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And then that is gonna hinge nicely for our camera mount. So the next thing we're gonna do is install the arms and we're gonna use 
these M3 by 8 button head screws. Going to put one through the arm here, like that. And then that's going to go into this top plate part here, into that bracket, like this. And then we're going to use these M3 locking screws, the ones with the plastic in them. And that's going to go on the other side there. So two mil driver. So two mil driver in there to screw that in. And then we're actually just going to get a pair of pliers to hold onto that and screw that reasonably tight, but not too tight so it can't move. So that arm needs to have a bit of movement in it, um, but reasonably secure. And that locking nut will keep that in place. And now we're just going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Now both the arms are installed. So next thing we need to do is get these tiny little spacers. And those are going to go in between, in that gap there, in between these holders and the arms. So what we're going to do is get another one of these M3 by 10 cap head screws with a washer. And we're going to get one of these spacers and put that through there so it just fills that gap. Like so. And get two and a half mil driver and screw that in through there into the press nut. And that's going to line that up nicely. Do the same thing on the other side. And that is the mount fully assembled. And you can see opening and closing there. And you can loosen up everything to make it easy to adjust and then tighten it all up just like that. So, th so the last thing we want to do is apply the foam. Now, I like to use these sort of tweezers like this or a knife or something just to get into the corner here and just peel back this paper like that. And you can peel the paper off. There's a sticky side there. And I like to use the tweezers like this just to hold it. And these are symmetrical for the bottom, so it's pretty easy to apply. Just goes on like this. Oh, just like that. And then you see these holes here for the M3 mounting are clear. Same thing on the other side. And exactly the same thing for the top foam. Just get into there in that paper, grab a corner, pull it all off. And then we just want to line it up with the top plate. And be careful with lining this up because once you put it on, it's very difficult to get off and it leaves a residue. So make sure you line that up properly, place it on there, and then just press it down onto the carbon top plate. And that gives you a nice surface to squish into and really grip the camera so it doesn't slide around on the top plate. And then you've got these got two of these included in the kit, which are quarter 20 screws. And especially for the Blackmagic Micro, they're really good. That's what these two holes are designed for. Two positions to mount the camera front and back. And then they just go through there. And they're the perfect distance to thread into and really compress this foam and pull the camera onto it very tight without being too long. And they don't get in the way of anything in the bottom. They're really easy to put it put in. So there's your camera mount finished. And then these are all the spare parts that you get. In case you lose anything or damage something, get all these included in the kit. And there you go.